All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another third part of my video tutorial on how to make a fancy wooden chair with zebras. Now, when I came in today and uh, loaded this project, for some reason or another, I didn't save it correct. So all I had left was the chair ribs and the uh, top arch, and I had to work my way up to this point once again and save it again. So uh, that's always a good reminder. Uh, you want to work uh, slowly and carefully when you're saving your work. You want to save it at, you know, uh, important uh, points in time when you're working. So that's always a good idea if you're going to start up, you know, take a break. Make sure you save your work and, you know, save it often. So anyway, I'm going to get started here. And as I left off, we'd already assembled the uh, chair ribs, the arch, the seat, and the armrest. So now we're going to build the uh, the legs, and this will be fairly short, and so and this will finish up this series of tutorials. So anyway, uh, I've got this uh, saved here. Everything has been merged, and uh, as always, you know, before you start, you want to make sure your pivot point is aligned, and everything is aligned with all three axes because we're building out uh, symmetrically on this project. So anyway, uh, to get started, we're going to ins uh, append a cube 3D to, uh, to build out our leg. And so there we got it. Make sure we have it selected. And if you like, you can work in transparency so you can uh, focus on the solder. So what we want to do, we want to, you know, uh, get it down in size and lengthen it a little bit. And so we go to our deformation, and uh, what I like to do is do the X and the Y to make it a little narrower. And so we got that, and then we want to lengthen it a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to gauge the length by the width between the armrest. That'll be my um, reference gauge to the length of these legs. So we'll try this. We'll just say it's just a little bit less then the back, the width, uh, the width between the armrest back there. And maybe we should make it a little bit longer. We'll go a little bit in into the uh, armrest. <coughs> and so we got that established. So this thing is still a poly mesh. Um, at this point, you know, you may want to divide it so you can uh, get some additional details. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wait. Until we've dynameshed it and add the uh, the uh, the milling or whatever it is, like you do it on a uh, on a mill machine, the lathing, the lathing, as I'd say. So I'm going to divide it a couple times to smooth it out, and we'll go to our geometry and we'll just divide this up to about level three. We'll delete the lower, and so you can see we get a little bit of detail there. But I'm just going to go ahead and make this a dynamesh, and uh, then we'll do the uh, the uh, lathing part there. And so we'll go down to our geometry, and uh, we'll dynamesh at 128, just to keep it simple, straightforward. And so now we have a dynamesh, and uh, we can do a little masking here. We see our center line, so we can. Uh, we can do some masking. We'll just do some very basic masking. We'll uh, do a rectangle from the center. And we'll go along the center here and drag out a little bit of a mask. And we'll blur that. Uh, let's see, we'll blur that a little bit. Get it brought up pretty good. And we'll inverse it. Now, actually, you can come in here and sculpt with your standard brush if you like, you can just activate your symmetry and uh, you want to activate radial symmetry. You can actually sculpt here, but so you don't get too much uh, initial uh, push in there. Or you can go in or out, but I'll do a little uh, light uh, light sculpting here. We'll get the intensity up. And we need a little bit more. And 
we'll do it like that and then we can inverse it and let's say we want some additional we'll clear this we're going to do a little symmetry another bit of symmetry here we'll just turn on our Z symmetry make sure we have your local symmetry on that helps a lot and we'll do the same masking and this will give us two uh, strokes here you see there you got two of them and we'll uh, inverse that it will blur it a little bit and this time instead of doing the sculpting I'm just going to do a deformation uh, we want to do a deformation along the uh, X and the Y there's always always different ways you can do this but you can just simply size up here for the other two parts and of course you can do before you do that you can do poly grouping add a crease you know whatever you like so we got that and um, we'll clear that and we'll smooth this out a little bit we'll use this uh, deformation polish I'll set up a little bit and so we're going to go with that um, so we got one leg and so from here we want to rotate it uh, by the X to get it uh, up and down and now we got that part now we want to position it we're going to make this the uh, the right rear back leg so we can look at it from the side here and we can do our offset to kind of keep things nice and square and we're going to get it down here right there and now we can do our offset to the Z We're just working our way toward the back there. We want to get it. We want to get a good position on this, and maybe have it uh, come through right about there. We're going to back up in the X. <coughs> and then we're going to go over on the X, a little, uh, the Z. Right there. That's going to be the position our back leg. Now you notice there's a little geometry sticking up to the seat so we can adjust that with the offset and the Y we don't want any geometry poking through you want to work slowly and uh, you know just kind of take your time you still got just a tad bit of geometry sticking through there though so We'll back it down a little bit more. Now, of course, another way you can do this, I've already merged everything just for the sake of simplicity. But if you want to keep all your tools separate, you can always go back and thicken the uh, seat in the y-axis if you have this problem. But we got, you know, a pretty good little fit there. So uh, we could also shorten the, uh, the leg itself. There's a couple of numerous strategies we could go there. What we want to do is I want to tilt this leg out a little bit. So we're going to uh, use our transform tool. Drag a line, hold your shift key down, and that will keep everything even. So we want to kick this out a little bit. And so we'll go down here. Oh, it must have a mask on it. Oh no, we got to rotate. Okay. Yeah, we might have a mask left over here that's uh, clear that. Okay. Well, something's not right there. Uh, let me see. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I think I got the symmetry on. Let me take the symmetry off. There you go. So now we can uh, do a little rotation here. Kind of at an angle there. Kick our leg out. Now we've got one leg built so what we want to do, we want to reflect this uh, across a Z plane we go to our sub tool master right here 
We've got the mirror. I want to mirror along the Z. As you can see, that's a reference in the back. So we got our second leg in the back. So now we can uh, merge down. Get these two legs together. And so now we got these two. Now we want to mirror along the X axis this pair of legs. And it will be a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll move it forward, is what we'll do. We'll mirror along the x axis. Now see it's a little bit short, but we can just move that. We can move that forward. We can uh, go to our offset here. And we're going to be offsetting on the X. We'll pull it forward a little bit. That looks, that looks good. Alright, so that finishes this tutorial for making your fancy wooden chair. Now you can go on and on with this. You can put braces. Uh, along these, all four, along the sides. You can add additional bracing. Uh, you know, there's a dozen things you could do. You could add a little, other little details. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to merge these down. And we're just going to merge the whole thing. You can see the little uh, selection there. ZBrush is still catching up. So it's caught up. Now we can... Uh, Merge this down, and you can save this as a tool by going to Save As. Make sure you're in the Tool folder, and we'll call this Fancy Wooden Chair as a tool. And <coughs> as always, you can uh, save it as a project just as well. And I've saved this a couple times as fancy wood fancy chair video tutorial. It's long as we give it a name here. And we'll save that. Alright, so we got everything saved. We got it saved as a project file. We got it saved as a tool. So the last uh, little bit here, we're gonna render this and I'm gonna show you a material I've taken a liking to. And you see the the Y is gonna be our plane that we're gonna render this on so we can turn off our X and our Z, and we'll zoom out a little bit there, find a nice angle to view it at, and of course you can isolate your rotation, uh, you can turn around to give it a good presentation there, and this material that I've been using with this is the uh, gradient map too, it kind of looks like a wood grain, and so we'll render this out, see what our light situation is. We'll put two lights on there. We'll make sure both cast shadows. We've got shadows. And you go to your render palette and you can smooth your normals. Set up your soft Z, your soft RGB. You might want to raise your global spectrum a little bit. Give it a little shine. And maybe pull back the shadows a little bit, add a little blur. We'll see how this looks. <coughs> so this is our chair. We've got our gradient map material. We've got it saved as a tool. We've got it saved as a project file. So you'll always have a chair you can pull out. And uh, it looks like we wound up with something un under one million polygons. So this is a fairly light object. And that's the end of the Fancy Wooden Chair Tutorial Part 3. And stay tuned as I'll be making some more. This has been sort of a lengthy project for me, but uh, thanks for viewing.